So they got in a room, and I think they fixed it. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Kind of an empty feeling for Patriots fans, huh? Just sitting there watching that Super Bowl, like blah, 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 blah. But even if you were like that, you had to get excited last night. It was, certainly was something and um, quite the comeback. And uh, since we're talking gaming here today, I just, you know, I did take a little flyer on the app, but uh, seven minutes to go and cashed. You know, fortunately, um, for the York household, I only bet in five and ten dollar increments, but it's uh, it's the excitement of the whole thing. Uh, welcome in. Nice to have you aboard. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on anything else but our subject matter tonight uh, because it's a pretty comprehensive conversation. I will note the impeachment hearings. You've heard of this process. The president's on a trial. Uh, I've never seen anything that more closely defines going through the motions than the proceedings today. I mean, it is it is just as perfunctory as perfunctory can be. This thing will wrap up on Wednesday. Uh, nary a Republican will vote for acquittal, and uh, it'll all be done. In the meantime, of course, you know, tonight we've got Iowa coming in, and that's probably going to be messy and tight. And tomorrow night, the State of the Union will be a half a spike in the end zone for the president because he's not fully acquitted yet. But all one has to look at the uh, ridiculous interview he had with Sean Hannity uh, a couple hours before kickoff to know that he hasn't learned anything from this. And so 2020 rolls on. In the meantime, here's a headline that uh, inspired a lot of conversation last week, a lot of excitement uh, in terms of those who wanted to see a resolution for the gaming industry in the state. And here's how Eyewitness News covered it. A major step forward for IGT and Toy River, but more importantly, major step forward for the state of Rhode Island. A kumbaya moment for gaming technology company IGT and Twin River Casino. I think it's fair to ask, how did this happen? IGT's Bob Vincent says Senate President Dominic Ruggiero played a crucial role in bringing the parties together to negotiate. The partnership comes after the governor's plan to extend IGT's control of the state's gambling systems for another 20 years spurred Twin River to call it a, quote, secret no-bid contract that they said would hurt Rhode Island taxpayers. The bitter public battle waging on amid a series of legislative hearings on the matter. But as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. It became very clear to us that the state wanted to continue with IGT. The proposal, if approved by the General Assembly, would ensure IGT keeps 1,100 jobs in Rhode Island and would give Twin River the control they sought over some slot machines. It would also see an expansion of Twin River's hotel and casino in Lincoln, including greater separation between smoking and non-smoking areas. Both sides agree that what happened to get here is water under the bridge. We don't look back with any regrets as to what we did. Uh, we did what we did. We thought that was in the best interest of the company and now we think this very much is in the best interest of our ways going forward. Uh, I wasn't surprised at all. I mean, you, you know, I, I think you were expecting that a lot of folks, in the, I don't think anybody in the state should be surprised. I mean, this thing seemed to be, not, not hand in glove, not, not, not this necessarily, but once you guys realized times are changing and you were the two big players, it seems to me, it, 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 does it feel natural now, sort of? That the oh, thing came it, together? It does, and I, I remind you, I think sitting here with you, I, I think we were always had uh, a, a strong amount of praise for the operation at Twin River. I told you it was a very competitive group in a, in a difficult market, and the, the folks there uh, really were people we're quite comfortable with and, and work with day in and day out. So uh, things have been said and done, but that's just, the, that's just the point. It's been said and done. It's time to move on and okay. time to look to the future and not the past. And, I think we've successfully done that. Bob Vincent, the boss of IGT, Marcus Safuli, the boss of Twin River. Um, your company has just not been satisfied with being the house of entertainment in the gaming industry. Uh, what, ins what, 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 remind everybody, what inspired or what right did your company think that this was a place to grow in terms of machine operations? So, um, 
what was critical to us, even in just performing our existing obligations for the state of Rhode Island, was to make sure we had the best, most competitive machines to provide our consumers. It was an important competitive issue for us with Massachusetts and Connecticut. You know, you're very familiar with all the regional growth. We felt we needed better machines to compete and a better process going forward than what we had in the past. That was always the number one issue. I had this discussion with you many times about us trying to get involved with the lottery. And the answer on that was really was only because we wanted to get to the machines and the machines were bundled in. So we had to focus on the machines. And once we were able to do that with IGT, the rest of it came very naturally. All right, so everybody understands, in case you've missed anything, Twin River, you know, you know, it's a hospitality and entertainment company. Um, and what's interesting about about the structure of gaming in this state is that and I'm sure nine out of ten people who walk into Twin River don't know this, but you are really the commission sales agent for the lottery operation known as the VLT deal there. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. And we rely on IGT backbones to run the systems every single day and that's that has always worked seamlessly for us and it's a very different model. In our other casinos around the country we get to decide what machines we need for our consumers, select them, purchase them, and manage them. Right? It's different in Rhode Island. Well, you've always talked about the nuance of this because you know people talk about the size of the arrangement that you had and you still have mm -hmm. uh, running out through 2023 with uh, Rhode Island vis-a-vis -vis the 20 year agreement you made with then Governor Kacheri you have had you know you're responsible for the scratch tickets and and the lottery tickets and all that kind of stuff and you supply the technology 85% uh, of the technology now at Twin River for those machines but the nature of the schematic of operations of gaming in Rhode Island is unique and and you always were trying to make that point that your bigger deal is about the uniqueness of the state's gaming? It is unique. I mean, it, it comes out of a lottery-centric model, uh, and, and, f and a number of other states have done that as well. But uh, you know, saying that Twin River is the retail host, it, in fact, of course it is, but it involves a great deal more investment than your normal retailer would have to make in making certain that something is working properly. Mm -hmm. It's not four walls and machines. Right. You, have to pay, you have to fight for your right to party. I mean, you have to make a big investment in that place. Oh, there's no question about it. Yeah. Yes, we're making a material <coughs> investment, and that was something that was really important to IGT and the governor and the senator, the Senate president and speaker. Everyone said, you could use a little more investment in the facility, right? It's a little tired. Part of this is on you, Twin River. If you want to compete better with better machines, you also need a better facility. And we said, okay, we'll take that on. And so as part of this, we'll be investing $100 million to spruce the place up. Some of it was already planned, but the big part of it is a major expansion on our gaming floor, plus the addition of a spa. You were, you're, I, I don't want to go back to the acrimony but for a discussion, but just to point to one of the things when you guys were flying at each other with paid advertising, attacking each other and calling, you know, suggesting each other was, you know, the bane of each other's existence. The the point here, though, was you were you were never critical about their their skills or talent. Neither were you. You were just you were corporately offended over the idea that these guys think they knew your business. So there's a little bit, and then you were farming out to anybody who could make a machine to be, become a to become a partner with you as you were yelling bid 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 because we want to be able to compete with them. Have you reconciled that yes. concept? Twin River was trying to be part of a conversation that they were not part of prior to the announcement. We appreciate the uh, uh, the perception and the angle that they were going at. We're we're very comfortable. I mean, to just get back to Mark's previous point, there's a big investment being made here. There's nothing being given away, and and that I think is an important point to be to be highlighted. Is that Twin River came forward and said, "We'll invest with you. We'll invest in what you have." So we're not just saying, "Okay, here's X percentage of machines." We're saying, "If you want in, you got to buy in, and you've got to come come to the table." They really did. That changed our attitude about it all. When when Mark said, "Listen, okay, we're going to put in a new wing, and we're going to invest this kind of money." The beginning of this was an economic development agreement. 150 million and 1,100 jobs. Now it's 250 million, a more competitive space, and you protect the jobs, and we've guaranteed a higher return on the salaries. When we come back, we'll talk to, we'll, we'll explain that um, because it's not just a straight machine and house of machine deal. Stay with us. So there's Twin River as, as it exists right now, and in a moment, I'm going to show you some photos of the, in terms of what is. Uh, proposed Bob Vincent and Mark Christofuli, the bosses of IGT and Twin River, respectively. Um, 
When we talk about economic development deal, there's there's a consulting report that came out at the behest of Republican leader Blake Filippi, who convinced Speaker Mattiello that this was a kind of objective analysis that they needed in order to be able to determine whether you guys should have your deal rebid. Remember, the 20-year deal with Governor Cherry at all the state of Rhode Island was under review. You asked for an accelerated review of that because of your timing and preparation and the governor, this governor, Governor Armando, had a new template and that's what this whole thing was all about. And that's when you said, hey, wait a second, what about us? We want to get in on this whole situation or, you know what, this thing needs to be bid because we can't commit to another 20-year deal without it. Uh, notwithstanding the idea that your deal wasn't bid, but we don't have to necessarily dig into that. Here's the thing. It, it, it's, it's, it's bigger than just a direct transaction in that you promised to keep a headquarters here. You promised to keep a number of employees mm -hmm. here. Um, there is a little bit of give and take, and maybe your deal that was a little fat, a la the consultant suggesting that it was in certain parts, is also part of the investment that the state is making in keeping the jobs in the headquarters. And so give me your, give me your tight analysis of that and, and explanation and definition of that. This is, this is a complete package, an, ec <coughs> an economic development uh, agreement. That's not at the heart of it. It has a not just a gaming deal. It has a number of components that we're extending out from where we are today. Uh, I think the study was there, and, it, and it's, uh, it, it can help some of them as they look at this, but it didn't study what's in front of them today. And I, I think you need to keep in mind, it is a comprehensive package of a lot of different elements that form the foundation of this. Stop pulling away foundations, the whole thing begins to get a, a little jittery. But I think what we've seen here is that report didn't look at the economic development aspects of this, didn't look at the jobs. Uh, uh, and I think we look at this as a, as a much different package than what was originally envisioned. Certainly when you have 250 million versus 150 million, you've got a, a much better uh, perception of what's going on, plus you have a much better gaming program being put forward. Right, so I mean, you're, you're operating the lottery outside Twin River and, mm -hmm. and, and um, Tiverton. So, uh, this was and and you at Twin River as you were tr as you were bucking into this thing and 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 competing into this thing, were suggesting that you could take over the processes if necessary. And you were you were kind of like what? Not, not a chance. The government's like that's not their business. Uh, but you, I think, were very um, candid, Mark, when you when you announced this deal last week to say, you know what? Listen, we get it. The state was tied in with these guys. They're the best at what they do. We might have reached a little bit. You know, to, to, to carve out what you really wanted was better control of what was inside your buildings, correct? Absolutely correct. And that's one of the nice things about this partnership now is that everyone's really kind of focused on the things that they do best, right? IGT gets to run all the systems. There's a kind of a phased in conversion over the next few years, so there's no risk to anything. You didn't really want that part of the business, did you? No, but you I actually told you business. that then. The, we, yeah. I mean, I was very clear even then. The only reason we wanted that was if that was the only way to get to the machine. Hmm. And if they were all bundled together, <laughs> then yes, we had to compete for that. But in this scenario, it doesn't make sense for us. It is in everyone's best interest to have IGT continue running the systems, and we accept that. So the average person who can pay only a little bit of attention to yep. each important issue in the state, you know, hears about this contentiousness between you and then wonders about the claim that this should be bid, 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 bid. Now the two entities come together and hope to deliver to the General Assembly something that it will approve. Uh, in whole or in most part, there might be an addition or a subtraction along the way, right? Um, your answer about why it doesn't have to be bid now is? Uh, answer is very simple. We thought a bid was better than the deal last year, and the deal this year is better than a bid for the state of Rhode Island for the taxpayers. Because in a bid scenario, you don't necessarily get the $250 million. You most likely lose the jobs, and it's much harder for us to make the investment to improve the facility. So we fix the machines, which are the most important revenue driver for the state. IGT has kept the jobs, which everybody wanted. They've kept the systems, which everybody wanted, and we get to manage manage the machines a little bit more and put a lot of investment in to get our stake. That's a great deal for the taxpayers. And under the pressure of bid, you were suggesting, hey, we might bid it, but doesn't mean we're going to be here. That was, that's what your stand I did, was. I did say that. If, if, if the state was going to go down that path, 
and individually look at things, and we would look at them individually as well. We wouldn't be looking at job guarantees going forward or the level of investment that we've come to the table and uh, been willing to make. Uh, and I think that's a critical piece. That's a critical piece for the economy. We have $110 million worth of annual payroll mm. that goes into this state. Some cool upside of this. Can we show a couple of the photos, uh, please? Uh, so this is the green, the, the, I can't see anything these days, but it seems to me that uh, this is the proposed expansion, and it shows hotel expansion uh, in about 14,000 square feet in a spa. Yeah. Uh, get a massage there. So did you get a massage? Is that, is that, is that, that whole thing? Yeah. And then and then show me another one, Eric, so we can uh, figure. Th okay, that's a good one. So the the non bright colors there are the current facility, and then in the back, the, the hotel was already in the back. The new hotel. This is like the, the the spa is the top yellow area, folks. So and there'll be another road that comes in. Uh, from the traffic circle, I guess, to, to go direct access to the spa. And then the big yellow thing on the bottom is a huge 40,000 square foot expansion of gaming space. Um, and you say maybe the top gaming space will come down. And then you say you're going to split the facility into non-smoking and smoking. So that's what I understood. Tell me what I missed. No, I think you got it all right. And then that what that does is that gives us a much newer, better facility for the additional gaming, the gaming that comes off the second floor, and it creates an opportunity for us on the second floor to put in a golf product like a Top Golf or something like that, or a bowling alley or other things to continue to try and drive traffic and enhance the customer experience. The track needs work. Yes. Yes. As an old track guy, I mean, I can't go in there and without <laughs> going. You know, it's hard. It's a very smoky unhealthy facility at least on the on the on the bot on the second floor of the facility well that's one of the things we want to try and change but it's challenging because we've had 40 or 50 years worth of continuing to add on to an existing building right so it's nice to be able to build the new spaces and that's what's that's what we're trying to do here because that's really the only way for us to solve the smoking issue in a way that I think everyone would find material and the machine breakout is going to be very interesting so right now you have 85 percent you're coming down to 77 percent of the floor for the next 18 months, you're going to be at 23%, meaning you'll control 23% of the machines and 77%. And then in, two, in a year and a half, you're forming a new entity, which will be a legal, not branded entity, just a legal entity between the two companies. You're 60, you're 40, you've got more, you've got three seats on the board, you've got two. It's all prorated, right? Yes. It feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. Who's the boss? IGT I is the boss. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's controlled by IGT, and just to keep in mind, I know it gets confusing for some people, there are IGT manufactured machines and there are IGT provided machines. So we have 77%, 78%, give or take, now. Of the responsibility. Of, of, of third party and IGT gotcha. contract. In the new situation, we'll have 60% of an entity that provides the entire floor, but there'll be seven or eight however many that are required uh, providers. IGT will be one of them. We're likely to have 40% of the floor. Uh, and the rest of it will be uh, provided through the joint venture. And that's where Twin River will have a say. And by the way, the IGT uh, manufactured product on the floor has to perform. It all has efficiency ratings. Uh, have an efficiency ratings going forward so that the best machines are on the floor. And there's a little increase in the premium machines. Yep. So there are a couple and of things. And by the way, it's a guaranteed turnover rate that's accelerated as well, right? You've got to yes. replace it from 6% every year of the machines on the floor to 8%. Is that correct? That's correct. So the law will remain at 6. 8% is an intra-company thing. What we've done is because IGT controls the company, we've built in additional protections that they're unable to change without our consent. And what is this premium machine thing? I don't get it. It's high stakes? Is that what it is? No, I think uh, people should think of the really branded stuff. Wheel of Fortune. I'll bring up Wheel of Fortune because mm. that's one of our top games. Uh, but things like that that you see are the latest movies, the latest brand content that's out there. So when we provide Wheel of Fortune, we have a licensing agreement with Sony. So that, that necessarily drives a much higher price for that product when it goes on the floor. In a commercial casino, that product would demand uh, a premium. It would also demand a lease, not a sale. And uh, that's well beyond the premium that Rhode Island awards to certain Is that a higher end player? Uh, on those machines? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No, no but those machines way. perform much higher. So think about it this gotcha. way. They're, much, they're higher performing machines that cost more money. In a traditional concern, c commercial environment, the casino gets to decide how, much, how many of them it wants because gotcha. it's paying extra. In our model, it's really hard to get them. Right. So this was an area that we were lagging in. The additional expense of having 5% of them be premium is now borne by us. All right. we, we could go for hours, but I'm trying to hit all the spots. When we come back to politics of this, stay with us.
And I stated to both the parties uh, how important they are to the state of Rhode Island. As far as jobs, as far as the economy, you know that's our third uh, highest, uh, biggest source of revenue, uh, and, and we were concerned. And I know it was not just me. I know it was the governor. I know it was the speaker. Uh, we were concerned about what would happen if didn't, this didn't come together. Uh, fortunately, uh, we were able to convince them that uh, the idea is to sit down. Uh, they know a lot more about this industry than I do and anyone else does. Uh, so we felt it was between the principals to sit down and see what they could work out. Two meetings with them, uh, and I thought things were going uh, pretty well, and they figured that they would probably be best off if they sat down to see if they could work out their difference, differences, and it seems like something came uh, as a result of that. Uh, you credit the Senate President with the facilitation of this. You know, I, I, I thought somebody should throw you in a room with a hundred pizza and a couple of beers and, and make sure you never come out until you made a deal. But the process seemed to work itself out corporately. Right now, um, the Speaker of the House seems to be uh, ambivalently supportive of the whole thing. Actually, the Senate President told me he didn't know much about the deal on Thursday when you guys announced it, so uh, I'm sure he's excited about it. The governor was very uh, standoffish about it. She didn't, she didn't criticize it, but she was... Like, like she didn't have ownership of it, so she wasn't owning it. And I know you've still had, and I'm guessing that in part has, has to do with some of the, uh, the, the tough issues that you had, Mark, with, with uh, her administration at the end. You, you don't withdraw those allegations that um, her chief of staff had, had, uh, had uh, roughed you up a little bit or had misrepresented in your mind, correct? So you still, you, is that a thing you still have with the governor's office to resolve? I commented on it before. I'm not commenting again. Nothing's changed. Right? Okay. That is what it is. It is what it is. It's just that's I'm not looking. I'm not looking yeah. at a crazy story. Yeah. I'm just saying. It seems to me the Senate President was driving it. The governor's going to come along, and you listen. I, I think yeah. the governor's position perfectly reasonable. There's there's something before the legislature right now. She had a lot of impact on what was originally crafted and what went forward. But she had I a deal she, with you guys. And now she's saying, all right, the companies have come together. The legislature seems to be willing to take it up, so I'll see what they come up with. I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. We weren't discouraged by your comments at all, and I think uh, uh, we're, we're looking forward to their support going forward. I mean, yes, the Senate president played a role in here, but he didn't do it in a vacuum. He, he contacted the other you know, leaders and said, I'm going to try this. And frankly, we all went to the first meeting with low expectations, and that's how these things work. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure I see a path forward. Uh, and but uh, the simple process of talking can help sometimes. Yeah, I do want to just add on that, though. We received a lot of encouragement from all of the stakeholders in government about trying to get this done. So the speaker, mm -hmm. members of the administration, they everyone they didn't want to make a choice between the two of them. Wanted and, to make it work, and, right? and, and they didn't want to put. They didn't want to put an existing 20-year economic development deal at risk by bidding it with your corporate position, which is, hey, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it, it was a tight wire act. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much diligence the legislators have done. Uh, I only have 30 seconds here or less. Timing, you want this done. This, you, you figure this will be done this session, right? We're hoping to get legislation in uh, next week or this week. Uh, I'm not sure when, but soon. All right. We'll be in touch. Guys, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Final word when we come back. Pollster Joe Fleming tomorrow night as we take a look at some of the numbers in the Iowa caucuses, which are happening as we speak. And, of course, tomorrow night, State of the Union as well. And we'll keep in touch with what's happening here locally. The State House might be excited about a real deal between IGT and Twin River. Not so excited with the controversies that are surrounding the speaker. We'll keep tabs on that. See you at 3 on the radio, too, on WPRO. Have a great night. See ya.